And we're back. Uh, My Green Pets. I'm William Green. This is Stephen Van Camp and Lewis. And we have just talked about uh, kind of saving Catlia roots if they are dead or dying. And next thing we're going to talk about, uh, tell me if you can see this on the screen, Stephen. Uh, I guess before we jump into the, the next topic, I, I have kind of one last thing to say. Sure. Um, it, you know, if you find that your roots are on your on your plants are dying for some reason, um, you know, there's a reason that happened. And, and for everybody listening, the, the goal is really to figure out what what are the conditions that would really cause that root growth and then to fix it. Because if, if you get these roots to come back and then suddenly you put it back in the same system that, that caused the original, uh, you know, the, the roots to die off, you're going to be back in the same situation. So I, I think it, it really behooves people to, to try and figure out what, what happened and, and to, to remedy, uh, remediate, I guess, the situation. And what do they say, an ounce of prevention? Yeah, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Right. So, congr- you know, even if you're able to save your roots, great. Can you not kill them again? That's the big question. Yeah, and the plants that are around it, right? You know, if one plant went downhill quickly, you know, check the other plants too. Mm-hmm. Well, I've gone through and repotted all of my little Cattleyas into bigger bark mix, um, so we will see. We will certainly yeah. see. You'd yeah. think that after five years, I'd kind of know what I was doing, but it's just really funny to see that. No. <laughs> it, it, you know, it, it's it's ongoing. You will always learn more stuff. Trust me. <laughs> all right. All right. So are you able to see this? Yep, I okay. see two plants of Cattleya Rex. Yes, that's right. So uh, these were the two that I used um, to pollinate. I used the smaller one down here. I used the pollen from this plant to pollinate the larger plant. And it was just kind of an interesting process because, um, first of all, I just wanted to comment on the flowers and say that I was kind of shocked, actually, that the the petals never really opened up. The flowers never became um, flat, as it were. And I was just wondering if you had noticed that in other species, if that seems to be a common thing. Yeah, that is actually a pretty common thing. Um, Some of the species are are not necessarily designed to be flat in the way that we would like. Uh, Coming to mind immediately is Cattleya mossii is, is very similar. You get that that dorsal sepal kind of reflexes backwards, and then you have the the, the sepals, um, excuse me, the, the petals kind of leaning forward in, in this, in, in just the same manner that we see here. Um, there's, there's plenty of other species that, that do that as well. You know, some of the more traditionally flat ones, of course, are the hybrids that have been bred that way. And then, uh, the Catlea walkeriana and nobiliore are very flat. Some of the other bifolates as well. Some of these, uh, some of these floofy cattleyas, I guess as they call them, uh, can, can have some some leaning forward. Also, these are, are, are young plants, and the negative qualities, at least us, uh, our human eyes, are typically most prominent, um, as I've mentioned before, on this first bloom. So, so the next time is these guys bloom, they'll get their their act together, hopefully, and really show what they can do. Um, yeah, I've got the uh, ruler up here. I just kind of was measuring them. They were about 10 centimeters across. And I was thinking, yeah, the flowers would have looked a lot bigger if the petals had flattened out a little bit. But um, yeah, hopefully we'll see uh, something different in the future in terms yeah. of that. But yeah, a lot of the pictures I saw online, once I started noticing, you know, you don't really notice those things when you're looking at pictures until you see it in front of you. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. That's kind of how a lot of them look so yeah absolutely all right so this was my little pollination tool um it is actually i think a blackhead remover (laughs) but anyway (laughs) uh it had nice little loops at the end there for grabbing pollen i said that's going to be good so i i sterilized it uh with uh, some 70 percent alcohol uh, solution and uh this little flower here i'm pointing to that's the one that uh, donated the pollen and this is the plant that received the pollen so, um, yeah, it was kind of an interesting situation because, um, I don't know, maybe we could comment a little bit on some orchid anatomy here because, uh, this, this, this thing right here in the middle is called the column, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, column or 
it, you know, before I, I knew what the, the plant parts were, I would call it the, the flower nose. Um, and, and yeah, that's the calm there. And you have both the male and the female parts. In fact, that, that particular shot, you can see both male and female parts right there. Right. Up here you have what's called the anther cap, and underneath it it's got some pollen. And yeah. then below this, I believe this is called the stigma. Yep, the stigmatic cavity, or it's a, it's sort of this, you know, it looks like a, a wet, sticky substance, and that's exactly what it is. Right. Um, and once you pop that anther cap off, you know, those, you want those pollen to be a nice, bright orange or yellow, depending on the species or, or the cross. Right. Um, you know, if you pop that open and they're, they're brown, they're, they're probably old and not great. Uh, yeah, you can see, it looks pretty yellow right there. Yeah, um, I just kind of use my finger to be a bee, uh, like play the role of the bee here. So just to kind of demonstrate how the the pollen yeah. will it will stick right there uh -huh. um, on your finger, and then as the uh, you know if this were stuck to an insect, of course the insect would visit a different flower and rub against the underside of that column again, and hopefully that stigma would be able to hold on grab onto those uh, pollen grains and you can see yeah. kind of as I rub my finger past it they kind of stick into that cavity um, yep. it's all well and good to do it on a di dissected flower but when you are trying to do it with a flower and keep the flower intact and not break anything off it uh, it becomes a different <laughs> becomes a different situation sure actually one of the things that I like to do is before you know before I, I take the pollen and I add it to the, the receiver, I guess, the, the plant that will eventually hold the pod, I actually like to cut away the petals and the sepals and, and the lip. And that way it's just me and the column, you know, and then it, I find that it's a lot easier to get in there and start mucking around, especially with smaller flowers. Right. Yeah, I, I, that probably would have been made things love to, I mean, yeah, like, like you said, a lot, of, a lot of slipper orchid growers, I know they'll tear off the pouch and uh, you know, do the pollination that way. But man, you you got to be really, I think, sick of the flowers at that point to be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, I'm just showing here that like, if for some for some reason you are able to pop that anther cap off, but the pollen don't stick to anything, you kind of have to dig them out. You can uh -huh. still pop them out of there. And I think something interesting about Calias is I didn't realize is that you know a phalaenopsis or a slipper orchid. I think a lot of orchids only have two of these pollinia. But Calias, or at least this Calia rex, they seem to have four. Yeah, the, the different species have, have different number of uh, pollinia. In fact, uh, the Lelia were sort of, you know, they're lumped in as Calias now. But originally, uh, once upon a time, it was thought that since Lelia have eight pollinia, uh, that they should be Lelia, and they should be a, a totally different genus than Calias. And you know, the genetics have shown that's not quite true. So, you know, different species and different groups within related species can have a different number of pollinia as well. Oh wow! Okay, I didn't realize that. So, number of pollinia is not in any way an indicator of genus. No, you know, not necessarily. Uh, once upon a time, that was thought to be the case, and, and uh, genetics has shown otherwise. Okay. Yeah. So here's just you know pushing those uh, pollinia into the flower. So it turns out I actually had one pollinia that had fallen out from another flower, and then I got four out of the ones that I, uh, you were just showing. Uh, that was just being shown there. So I ended up stuffing five little pollinia into this one flower. Um, hopefully that's gonna. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that's gonna have some effect on my chances of success there. And then I this. Think so. Hopefully, I mean, who knows, right? And the last uh, shot here is just kind of looking up into the flower and you can see that you know the stigmatic cavity there is just stuffed full of pollinia hopefully uh one of the one or two of those are gonna actually take and uh what the flower looks like now i don't have it with me actually it's in the greenhouse and they're closed on sundays but um the flower here on the left has already closed and uh the the uh, column itself has kind of changed from a white color to more of a creamy yellowish color and it's started to kind of change shape. It's kind of that stigmatic cavity has kind of started to close up. And then the uh, stigma or the uh, column itself looks like it's swelling. And I'm, I'm guessing not too long from now, we're going to see the actual capsule of the plant start to start to start to swell. Yeah, that, that, it sounds like everything's going well, you know, in, in this early stage. And 
Um, that's kind of what you look for is, is the flower should senesce uh, quickly. The, the pollinated flower should senesce more quickly or, or sort of dry up and die more quickly than the other ones that are not pollinated. Um, and then what you'll see is that, you know, the, the ovaries just down um, on the stem there will, will kind of swell and get rounder and rounder. It's almost like uh, on TV when you see a baleen whale kind of grabbing the krill, how their throat just expands out and you see those pleats expand out. It's kind of the same over time. It's a slow motion process of that with these guys is that that area just kind of gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and kind of turns into this football shaped thing. Now I'm con I'm currently in contact with uh, Troy Myers Conservatory in uh, Washington, and he says that they will do species uh, pollinate or they will they will do flasking for species orchids, um, which I think is great. So I think that's going to be my you know assuming this all goes well. But he's let me know that um, the capsules on these things need to be a year old before harvesting. Okay, yeah, I have never pollinated Catlea rex, that seems like a pretty long time. Uh, so th there's sort of two techniques that people employ uh, and different flaskers have different opinions on this. You know, some people prefer the, cr the green pods. Okay. And that means, so before the, the pod is ready to be hard or ready to sort of open on its own and drop all the seeds, you clip it off, you send it in, or, or you pollinate it yourself, and you pull out these seeds. And the reason I like that is that that is sterile. So, Right, okay. It hasn't popped open yet, so there's no contaminants inside. Yeah, so the inside is clean. So basically, you just need to sterilize the outside of, of the pod and then bring it into your sterile environment and kind of work on your flask that way. Uh, the other side of that is is taking dried seed that's already, you know, the, the seed has popped open, air has gone in, seed might be falling out. Uh, and then you send that in and that's a little trickier, although not, not a whole lot, but it is tricky because each individual seed has to be sterilized and, and you can do that through various techniques. Mm, um, you have to wash them or something. Yeah. 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 And, and you can, you can do that. And different flaskers prefer different things. Okay. Yeah. So I'll just stay in touch with them. Maybe I'll just send them pictures and hopefully, you know, uh, over time, you know, 365 days does seem like an awful long time for a capsule to mature, but we will see. Yeah. yeah he I, actually I told me. Rex, but, but, but he actually told me. Troy Myers should know. Hopefully so. He actually told me that the <laughs> first uh, species that they ever flashed at their conservatory 22 years ago was actually Calia Rex, which oh, I no thought way. was really funny. Yeah. And oh, there's some pictures. Cool. There's some pictures of uh, that plant. Like, you have to submit. Um, flower pictures, pod pictures, pollination dates, all this kind of stuff, and um, the pods that 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 particular donor uh, donor harvested, he harvested at 365 days. So I was just like, oh my gosh! So this time next year, a, I have to keep the plant alive that long. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, and, uh, and happy, and so it doesn't sort of spontaneously abort the pod. And I mean, well, you get them this long. I, I think, I think you got it in the bag. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully so. Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, I would love to have a couple of flasks from this cross, of, you know, to keep working with and grow on in the future. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, that's about all I've got in terms of the pollination story. Is there anything else that you have been experiencing lately with your collection that you'd like to share? Um, I just hot. They're growing. Uh, I had a a cat lay of Arsavixii that I showed it pulled some pollen off of that. And actually you and I were talking a little bit earlier about, about storing pollen. Oh, right. Yeah. How and, do you store pollen? Yeah. And so, so I take it and I put it in, some people use a paper towel or uh, I like to use just a little, little piece of paper that I write the name of the plant on and the date that I harvested it. I'll take the, the pollinia and sort of create this little packet. It's about this big. Um, and then put it in a little, uh, pill jar and I, I put it in the fridge and um, it lasts for about a year. Okay. Um, I think there are some folks out there, out there that don't even refrigerate theirs. I, I, I always refrigerate mine. It just seems like a better way to store vegetative material to me. So Sure. Yeah, but, and that's not based on any kind of scientific anything that I read. It just makes more sense to me. Right. Well, hopefully it works. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I pollinated 
more than one plant on on refrigerated pollen so it, it definitely works okay good deal um if you would like to check out uh steve's collection you should definitely check out his instagram he is isurus 79 and he has uh, just recently posted a was it a catacetum black knight something like that you have in bloom i, I did yeah it's uh i would have brought it over uh but the, the flowers just folded up today okay uh in this 100 plus degree heat they don't last four or five days uh, but yeah it's, it's the third bloom on that particular growth for this year and uh, it's, it's a good hybrid, a little expansive by tenebrosum and uh, you know, sort of a, a black black flower with a, a white callus or a cream callus in the middle. A very unique color. That's awesome. Well, maybe next time we can talk, uh, do a catacetum, kind of midsummer catacetum update. Um, most of mine, sure. most of mine, within the past couple of weeks for sure, I really noticed that the bulbs have started to swell. I mean, the new bulbs have really started to put on weight. So that's always a good sign, especially when... You know, here we are in mid-August. We still have what uh, all of September and most of October as well of growth. Yeah, we've probably got another two to three months of growth. So, um, you know, that sounds sounds like they're doing really well. Yeah. Okay. Well, Steve, thanks for joining me today. I'm gonna go ahead and close this off, and uh, we'll see you next time right here on My Green Pets. Thank you, Steve. Sounds good. See you.